Piece inside of the bins You wanted a switch, so I just ended up calling your friends We was at Noble thinking where you at Adding ad libs to your arrangements and productions can be a really good way of adding something a little bit extra. It can either punctuate a word or a phrase. It can give the audience or listener some time that they can kind of chime in and have their kind of call and response moment. And it can add a nice little bit of ambience and background noise. But I feel like a lot of people when they're mixing ad libs kind of just treat it more as an afterthought and they just kind of pop them in there on the lead vocal chain. And to be honest, that can be a disservice because it might not be doing the job that it should be doing. So in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at four different vocal chains that you can use to process and mix ad libs to add a little bit of something extra into your productions and mixes. So we're gonna dive into Cubase and look at four different ways to process ad libs. But before we do that, my name is Austin. You're watching Make Pop Music where we have weekly production tutorials. If you like this video, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe because that helps us out on the channel a ton. And after the video, if you wanna support our channel, you can head over to our website, makepopmusic.com. We have sample packs, preset packs, we have a course. We also have a bunch of free downloads over there as well. So head over to the website and check that out. The link will be in the description below. But let's dive into Cubase so we can look at how to process these ad libs. Let's talk about ad lib style number one. Of course, we're going to cover that kind of Don Tolliver, Travis Scott, super spacey ad lib. So let's just go ahead and dive right into that. Here's what the vocal sounds like. It's just a super kind of ambient hip hop pop song. And we've just got these ad libs that Riley has tracked in. And it quits, I'm with the two pieces inside of the band. Side of the band. You wanted a switch. So they're not really doing anything right now. Let's go ahead and I'll kind of show you what you want to do for ad libs. So a lot of the time on ad libs, I am going to add a little bit of extra EQ because I want these to be a little bit thinner and I also want them to be a little bit uh, more bitey. So what we're doing is we're using the new HMD Rosetta EQ from Help Me Devon. If you're not familiar with their YouTube channel, it's an amazing production YouTube channel and they just launched their brand new EQ, the Rosetta. So I bought this with my own money, but to be honest, it's like the most fire EQ you can get for under $100. So let's see what what we're doing to kind of give this vocal a little bit extra. We're adding some clarity, we're adding some bite, we're adding some warmth, a hair of air and a hair of presence, and we have the enhance button on. And then subtracting, we're kind of doing some DSing, we're taking away a lot of harsh and we're taking away some mud. So let's go ahead and listen before and after. It's just gonna add a nice little bit of bite and bright. Side of the bands. It's cool, let's hear it now. Side of the bands. Now it's gonna cut through that dense arrangement a lot more. The next thing that you're gonna want for this kind of Travis Scott, Don Tolliver, super spacey uh, ad lib is you're gonna to wanna to go crazy with tuning. So I have it set to the key. We've got the retune speed at zero and I'm giving it a little bit of formant. I could probably even give it a little bit more and let's kind of see how that works. Side of the bands. All right, so now we've got that tuning happening, especially on like a longer phrase. So now we've got it a little bit bitier. We've got a little bit of tuning. Calling your friends. The next part, this is really important, is to use something like a doubler. You could either use doubler by waves or duo by auto tune or the 910 harmonizer by eventide. I'm just using doubler on the four voices preset and I've kind of turned the gain down here. So we've got voice one down 2.8 dB, voice two down 4.6 dB, voice three down 3.1 dB, and voice four down 4.6. So it's gonna give us a pretty balanced but wide vocal. Let's hear that. Calling your friends. It also adds quite a bit of volume. You can always gain stage on here if you want to. I'm gonna leave it like that for now because it's not super uh, important. Here's what it sounds like with a doubler, that Rosetta EQ adding a little bit of bite and clarity and uh, some auto-tune. Let's go ahead and add where this kind of uh, ad lib style really comes into play, and that is by adding reverb and delay. So we're gonna be using Spaced Out by Baby Audio. This is a really good way that you can add ambience to a track without having to use separate EQs and delays and reverbs, because you kind of get all of those functions in this plugin, and all of the Baby Audio stuff is super affordable. We use it a lot on this channel, so definitely go check this one out. But what we've got is we've got this set to two times. We've got the uh, delay happening basically on every first note of a sequence. That's going to give you that kind of like eighth note, super Travis Scott, super Don Tolliver, like eh, 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 eh. that's like a really big pattern that they're using a lot on most of their ad libs and throws. Uh, and then we've got the sustain at 68, feedback at 37. We do have dimension with motion on. We have this as like a hazy texture because I don't need a lot of clarity. I want it to kind of have that like super ambient, almost warbly sound. And then we've also got some reverb going on on the right side here with a medium space. We've got it at like length 66%, lush 33%, and then pre-delay at 28, stardust at 74, 
uh, filtering out anything below 250 and anything above 5200. We have a little bit of cleanup happening and we're going super wide with this. So here's what this sounds like now with that effect, plus auto-tune, plus a doubler, plus the Rosetta EQ in the mix. It's just gonna give you that really nice, big, wide, spacey vocal. Bits, I'm with the two pieces side of the bins. Wanted to switch, so I just ended up calling your friends. We was that noble, thank you. So there's ad lib style number one. That's something that most artists are gonna want at some point in time. We ended up not actually using something like that for the actual record. This is just an example. But let's go ahead and let's move on to ad lib style number two. So this one's gonna be quite different. It's gonna be much drier and it's gonna be kind of a crushed vocal. So what we're doing is we still have the Rosetta EQ basically doing the exact same moves, taking away a little bit of mud, taking away some harshness, and just adding a little bit of bite and clarity because we need it to cut through. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do for this is since this is going to be a kind of distorted and crushed ad lib, I'm actually adding tape by Baby Audio. This is like tape saturation. Um, we've got the drive at 21 dB. We've got the output at minus 3 dB. We've got the mix at 63 and then everything else is pretty stock. Get your ears ready because since it's saturated, it'll be pretty loud. I just find tape to be such a nice kind of like even saturation, especially for doing this kind of telephonic vocal, because we're going to go in and we're going to do a lot of filtering. But that kind of gets us in this really cool space. We do have some sins over here that are the same as the lead vocal, but they're just really tucking it into the mix. So you can hear that we do have it in there. Now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and start EQing. So we're doing a 24 dB high cut at uh, 3568, and then we're doing a 24 dB low cut at like 520 hertz. And then you can just kind of give it some mid bumps just to kind of make sure that those resonances actually pump out of a mix. Um, because if you have these completely gone, it's gonna be so band passed it might get lost. So adding those kind of like telephonic mid frequencies can be a really nice way to have it actually stick out of the mix. Here's what it sounds like with that EQ and that tape saturation. And now if we actually poke that into the mix, you'll hear that it's tucked back nicely, but it's definitely still audible in that mix. And you can kind of get the taste. It's a totally different aesthetic than something like that really tuned, really wide vocal. But this also works just to do something completely different. Some of the two pieces side of the bands. You wanted to switch, so I just ended up calling your friends. We was that noble. So different strokes for different folks. Maybe you want a crushed vocal. Maybe you want a super wide, spacey, ambient vocal. Let's go ahead and let's talk about the next thing. Uh, that's going to be just a really dry, punchy vocal. So what I would do for this is literally just use kind of the lead vocal EQ. And again, we're going to go through. You can see that this one we're making a little bit darker with the subtractive mode. Um, and then we're still adding everything that we had before. The only big tweak on Rosetta EQ is we're darkening it, darkening it just a little bit because I don't want this to be overly bright, like I don't want it to stand in the exact same realm of the lead vocal. And then one of the really big things that you can do for dry vocals that I think adds quite a bit of pizzazz is if you start automating the panning. So dry vocals up the middle can be kind of boring and just kind of like whatever. It just sounds like the vocalist stepped back and said something else. But what we're going to do now is we're going to automate some panning. So I've got an automation lane here. You'll see we'll go from like 72% left over to 50% right, over to 60% left, over to 80% right. And that's just going to keep the listener entertained because since you don't have all of those spatial effects, you don't have all of those saturation effects, this is just a pretty chill kind of ad lib. You can just use it to add a little bit of extra space with something like panning. Done with the two pieces side of the bands. You wanted to switch, so I just ended up calling your friends. We was that noble thinking where you at. And now on I track. No more. And then this is cool right here. You can even do like a, I call it like a traveling pan where it'll start on one side and end up on the other side. It's really good for adding spatial effects. I do this on synths and guitars a ton. So if you want to go with something kind of like a dry, punchy ad lib, like you don't want a ton of spatial effects, you don't want any of that kind of like super decaying reverb, you don't want that saturation, this can be just a really nice way to kind of pump it in. Because if we were to basically just have all of this up the middle, let me show you what this sounds like. Let me turn off read and write. Let's pan this to the center. It's a little bit boring. It's just kind of stale. You wanted to switch, so I just ended up calling your friends. Calling your friends. We was that noble thinking. Like, it's fine, but 
I mean, with that panning, I think it adds a whole different dimension without you having to go crazy with post effects and things like that. So you don't always have to go with like that Travis Scott or that super crushed vocal. You can go with like a more dry, natural thing. Just make sure you do something where it's not just like a really boring ad lib straight up the middle. Um, let's go ahead and close some of this automation. Let's go to ad lib style number four. So I'm calling this kind of like the mother load because this is doing a bunch of different stuff. So let's go ahead and we'll go step by step by step. So again, we're starting with that Rosetta EQ um, to add a little bit of bite. This is the same settings as the first two. Um, here's what it sounds like straight up. Side of the bands. We just have a delay and a reverb send. Nothing crazy. It's just a Valhalla vintage verb and a quarter note delay from repeater. Uh, let's go to auto tune. We're just doing the same auto tune that's kind of on the main song. Nothing crazy. What we're going to do on this one, though, is I've been using this a lot lately. The Avox Throat by Antares and auto tune. It's in their bundle, and I believe, I don't know if they're still doing the deal, but they were doing the deal where if you tried their subscription for free, uh, you got a perpetual license of this. So if they're still doing that, at least go sign up for the subscription for the free trial so you can download this because I find this to be a really, really good tool for like vocal production. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna be automating the pitch, we're gonna be automating this length for the throat and the width for the throat. So let me pull up this automation lane so you can kind of see what's going on. And this can be a really cool way to just kind of like have everything have this weird kind of movement and modulation um, because you know, things can get boring. So here's the different automation parameters that we have going on. Let me open up throat so you can actually see this moving in real time. So now we're going up. Calling your friends. Now we're going up an octave. Now we're going down. And we were doing a length. So we're automating the pitch, we're automating the throat, we're automating the width, and sometimes we even have that throat and that width drifting as the phrase goes on, just to give us a little bit of extra movement. So you can always get really kind of creative with something like throat. Um, you can also do that with the format control and auto-tune, or even something like Little Alter Boy. I just find that Little Alter Boy gets uh, super kind of like, it, it starts to break apart a lot easier than something like throat does, but that's what we're using for now. And then I just have a basic doubler on. It's just a doubler from Waves again. This is on the basic doubler setting. Nothing changed on it whatsoever. Set it up. Calling your friends. And now we're going to add some delay. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Comeback Kid by Baby Audio. We're going to use this on a quarter note. We're not doing much high cut and low cut because we're going to go through and filter later, but we do have a little bit of tape. We have a little bit of sauce. Um, and then we have a little hair bit of ducking and width. So let's hear what this sounds like with the delay. Calling your friends. Now, what we're going to do to really tuck this into an ambient space, because with all of those kind of throat adjustments and things like that, it needs to be ambient. If it's dry, it might just sound a little bit awkward. So what we're doing is we're using crystalline on the spacey setting with 100% sparkle plus 45 width. I want something super wide, like obnoxiously wide. Um, and then we're doing some dampening with like at 220 hertz and then at like 4,500 hertz. Um, other than that, nothing really crazy is going on. We have a two bar decay tail. I really love this uh, reverb specifically because you can set your start point and your end point in terms of bars and measures rather than just straight up milliseconds. So when I'm using it for something like sound design or for ear candy or for something like this that I know I want a certain amount, it's really easy for me to just go in and say, oh, I want this to decay for two bars rather than say like four and a half seconds or whatever. Um, we have a little bit of ducker and what that's going to do is kind of sidechain that reverb to itself. So that reverb won't kick in until that audio uh, kind of lets go a little bit. And you can go really drastic with this. You can go to 100% and it'll give you that like side chain pump, but we don't need that. And then uh, dry wet's at 40. So let's hear this now. Super big, super washed, but it's still super clear and you can still make out exactly what Riley's saying. And then other than that, we're just doing a little bit of filtering with Pro-Q. So we've got like 308 Hertz at 12 dB. Um, we've got like 10k hertz at 12 db and then we're just taking out some of these like super high mids right here around 7k because as that formant shifts it'll kind of knock these like weird resonant frequencies up and since we're doing so much automation i want to make sure that as we automate that throat length up and it starts to get into that like piercing frequency it's not going to clash too much so 
with the throat adjustments that are being automated and then a comeback kid that's adding a little bit of delay, Crystalline adding a little bit of reverb, and then the EQ just kind of taming everything. Here's what it sounds like in the mix. This can give you a really cool kind of spacey textural element. It's time with the two pieces side of the bins. You wanted to switch, so I just ended up calling your friends. We was that noble thinking where you at. And I don't wanna fight no more, but the holes I track cause you don't want me no more. So I stay out late to fall. Say I'm good when you this is also a really cool tip if you have like a background vocal. So like you can see right here, it kind of starts as an ad lib. But then once we get into this part over here, he's almost kind of harmonizing with himself um, because the ad libs are happening at the same time as the vocal. So with those pitch shifts and those throat shifts and everything like that, it can just be a really, really cool textural element. So that's the four styles we're going to talk about in this video. If you want to see more ways to mix ad libs, let us know. For some reason, it's just something that we've never really covered on the channel in depth. So Hopefully you learned a lot from this video. If you did, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe because that helps us out a ton. Let us know in the comments what videos you wanna see in the near future because we always take your suggestions. And then other than that, if you wanna support our channel, you can head over to makepopmusic.com. We have sample packs, preset packs, MIDI packs. We have an amazing 14 and a half hour course on production. And we have a bunch of freebies over there. So if you go to the freebies tab, you put in your email address, you can unlock literally hundreds of plugins and samples and infographics and stuff like that. So definitely head over to the website so you can check all of that out. But that's going to do it for this video. We will be back next week with much more content. So we will see you then. But until then, much love. Peace.